I got into this position because I'm chairman of the scientific advisory group for children with cancer and I've been doing that for just nine months and, and my term of office is coming to an end. But we were discussing within the charity how they could uh, prioritise funding streams for new research and uh, they've taken a strong interest in brain tumours and that's my specialty. And so uh, we were discussing, they wanted to hold a meeting or a workshop and so we put forward this idea that drug delivery is one of the big translational research targets that, that no one else is doing. This is the first workshop of this nature, we think, worldwide. No one has ever brought children's cancer specialists together to talk about drug delivery development in this way. So this was something that children with cancer were very keen to support. So we got a, a committee together of enthusiastic scientists and clinicians, some, most of whom knew a bit of each other but didn't know each other a lot. And we used their networks of research networks and clinical networks to identify leaders in the field. And we were really struck by the enthusiasm of everybody we contacted who said this, they'd never been to a workshop with this as a focus, this is what they wanted to come to do, and we had no refusal. So we thought that was a good sign that this was probably a workshop at the right time for the right subject. I've described about the difficulty of diagnosis, and then there is increasing complexity of the biology of the disease, of knowing exactly what type of tumour you have. There are over a hundred different types of tumour which can be identified down the microscope. Each one of those types can be subcategorized by two or three subtypes using genetic and other molecular techniques. So we're now moving to an era when the process of allocating you to a diagnosis and a treatment indicator is proliferating astonishingly. So one of the great challenges for the doctors and nurses is making sure they've got the right treatment for the right patient. And linked to that is the ability to collect evidence to justify those selections. Because some of the treatments are extremely expensive. Some of them are not available in one country but are available in another because of localised practice. And what we want to do is make everybody aware of these new treatments so that we can all have access to them in an equal way so we don't have disadvantage built into the system. And these sorts of discussions and debates really help that because it shares experience and knowledge by opinion leaders and they go home to their home countries and discuss the, the discussions they've had here, use them as the backdrop to their guidance to their own local health systems. The traditional tablet or drug into a vein has lots and lots of side effects because to get the drug into the brain you have to give far more than you need for the rest of the body because only 20% of it gets into the brain on average. So that's the major challenge. So drug, so drug delivery systems that overcome that waste of drug with all its side effects are very attractive. The problem is making sure that you, you deliver it successfully. So if you infuse drug directly into a tumour-bearing organ, such as the brain, you want to make sure that that infusion delivers drug to every area that has the tumour in, because if you miss a bit, then that tumour grows. So that's one of the problems. If you're giving a drug into the spinal fluid to deliver to the whole of the surface of the brain, you need to make sure that the drug you infuse or deliver to that is effective and not too toxic, because you're giving it directly onto the surface of the brain. So those are the two big challenges. You can use other techniques. You can infuse drugs into the arteries that supply the tumour, that's getting the drug just to that tissue and not to the rest of the body so much. Um, that requires you to thread a catheter up very small arteries, which in children are even smaller than adults. So that can be cha technically challenging. You may create drug delivery polymers or wafers that you put into the tumour cavity. And you need to be confident that those are safe to use, that they do what you think they're doing, and that they don't cause extra toxicities. Intrathecal therapy is the first, is already established and is going to grow, I suspect. So medulloblastomas, pineoblastomas, ependymomas, all have been demonstrated to respond to intrathecal therapy. Interstitial therapy, which is where you direct the drug directly into the tumour itself, is being experimented upon currently. In Bristol, uh, the team there are putting catheters into the brain stem which have got tumours within the brainstem 
and directly infusing drugs into the tumour and they are seeing responses. That's a tumour which we have no other effective therapy and is incurable in 90% of patients. The tumour type ATRT, we're using intrathecal therapy to control it and we are getting better response rates in relation to the use of the drug in that route but also other things. There are many different genes that tell you whether the tumour is more susceptible or not. So there are things happening which are exciting and involve this sort of drug delivery technique but we want to grow it and use our positive experience to make more effective use of this approach in order to reduce the toxicity for the patients, make them more comfortable, mean that they have to have fewer other long-lasting toxic treatments so that they end up being reduced in their brain damage because currently survivors of brain tumours, 60% of them are moderately or severely disabled. And so although we may cure 60% or 70%, we're actually creating quite a lot of people who have lifelong disability. We've been encouraged to come here because children with cancer have 1.2 million pounds of grant funding to distribute and clearly developments from this workshop uh, would be a very good outcome and applications, successful applications to them being funded would generate research activity which would put the UK and the partners in this, in this workshop into a strong position to influence the future by developing good, strong translational research. Cancer Research UK, which is the biggest cancer funder in the UK, have got a, t a grand challenge where getting a drug to every cell in the body is one of the challenges and this would be something would be highly appropriate for this group to put a, an outline bid into in the next few days really because that's what this discovery is all about, this workshop is all about. It's about how do we get drugs into the brain which is the bit of the body that's hardest to get drugs into. So that would be good. And then identifying other funders who have an interest, and there are some other charities here, who may well have an interest in this topic, and they would like to see that developed with their support and funding. So that's what, how research is done. Uh, we would like to see more of that happening. I think um, if, we've, if this meeting's successful, and six hours into it, it seems to be successful, if by the end of tomorrow, people feel that this meeting has met their needs, then organising another one in a couple of years' time would seem to be a sensible step to see where we've all got to then.